So I wondered if you could start off by telling us what autoimmunity is. Well, I guess the immune system has evolved to deal with invading microorganisms and pathogens, and that's why we have an immune system to get rid of those organisms directly by interacting directly with them, or by killing those cells that are infected with those pathogens. Now the immune system does a very good job at doing this, but sometimes those mechanisms go wrong and the immune system then starts to recognize normal healthy tissues and healthy cells and starts to mount a response and mediating the destruction of those tissues. And we call that autoimmunity. So what are some examples of autoimmune disease? Well, there are many different types of autoimmune disease and I guess they can be um, grouped into two main categories. The tissue-specific autoimmune um, diseases such as type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is when the immune system or the cell-mediated immune response targets the beta cells in the pancreas and those cells in the pancreas are the ones that produce the insulin to control glucose within the body. Um, another example of a, of a tissue-specific autoimmune disease is multiple sclerosis where there is destruction of myelin which is the protein coating around our nervous cell, our, our neurons and that can be destroyed. And then we have other types of autoimmune diseases, for example, um, the more systemic autoimmune diseases that can be found in multiple locations within the body. For example, rheumatoid arthritis, which is a predominantly antibody-mediated systemic disease that targets the joints, and the joints are obviously dispersed throughout the body. And then another common systemic autoimmune disease is, is called lupus, or systemic lupus erythematosus which is a disease which targets actually the DNA molecules in our cells and it causes these complexes to form which destroy the small blood vessels and can give us vascular disease. So how do autoimmune diseases develop? Well, during the development of the immune response or the immune system, this happens shortly after birth and during this time the immune system or the cell cellular components and the antibody producing cells they learn to tolerate the normal self proteins within the body and we call this process self tolerance and for the most part um, this works and generally most people don't develop autoimmunity but we now know that those mechanisms of self tolerance can be dysfunctional or can be not working properly and so some individuals will develop responses against their normal healthy tissues and what are the best treatments we have currently available to treat autoimmune conditions? We're understanding more and more about how the diseases develop and we're understanding the cellular and molecular mechanisms that give rise to the disease. And so by understanding these mechanisms, we may be able to identify targets for therapy. But for the most part, they're treated by dampening the immune response in targeting that, hopefully, to the d disease area. And this can be through dampening the in inflammatory response through the use of steroid treatments which dampen inflammation. And we know that inflammation drives immune responses and so by controlling immunity we can dampen the immune response. And are there any sort of future treatments in the pipeline for autoimmune conditions? But long-term steroid therapy is not a desirable treatment and so there are many groups working throughout the world trying to understand how these diseases are manifest and trying to control them. And one of the ways we're trying to control them is to understand those mechanisms of self-tolerance that I spoke about, how they are dysfunctional. And one of the things that is very important that's come out in the last sort of 10, 15 years is the role of what we call regulatory cells. And these cells are naturally arising within the body and they control immune responses when we want them to. For example, when a disease is being controlled and you want to regulate the immune response. So regulatory cells also are very important in controlling autoimmune disease. It's been shown that in the absence of regulatory cells, um, individuals have a predisposition or will develop autoimmunity. So understanding how these regulatory cells work may be a way in which we can potentially treat pre-existing autoimmune conditions.